inferior planets are able to do something superior planets cannot do, and that is transit the sun. Remember, inferior planets can never be in opposition because opposition means they're on the opposite side of the sky from uh, the sun as seen from Earth. So what you would have for an inferior planet is that it could be between the Earth and the sun, whereas an inferior planet could never be at opposition. Well, being between the Earth and the sun means that it could actually pass directly between the Earth and the sun. Now, normally it's not exactly lined up right, and so that means that it's kind of like new moon. You don't always get a solar eclipse, but once in a while, an inferior planet can pass directly between the Earth and the sun. And so if you're looking at the sun uh, with a telescope using the right kind of filter because you don't want to blind yourself, then you can actually see the shadow of the planet passing in front of the sun. And so these are actually pictures of the sun that I took from the TCC Northeast campus uh, back in 2006. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little dot on each of those pictures. And that little dot uh, is the planet Mercury. It, it doesn't look like much. There's kind of a big dot over here. That dot's a sunspot, but that little dot right there is the planet Mercury as it's transiting the sun. And so Mercury is very small. Mercury is not a whole lot bigger than our own moon. And it's quite a long ways away. And so when it does pass in front of the sun, it's a very small shadow. Venus, on the other hand, is quite large by comparison. So Venus is much closer to us, and it is almost the size of Earth. And so uh, Venus, when it passes directly in front of the sun, it's a much bigger shadow. And so here's a picture actually someone else took of Venus. That's one that I took. And so, again, you see this very distinct and large shadow passing in front. So, so that was one that I took from the TCC Northeast campus again. Okay. So Mercury goes around the sun pretty quick. And so as it goes around the sun rather quickly, uh, and it's, it's actually pretty well lined up with Earth's orbit. So transits of the sun due to Mercury happen fairly frequently. And so uh, they actually happen you know, on a regular basis. And I've actually seen Mercury transit the sun several times. Uh, 1999, it transited the sun, and we had telescopes set up on campus to observe that event, do the same thing in 2006. Uh, uh, 2016, it, it transited the sun, uh, but was not visible from Texas. 2019, vis did it again, and we set up and observed it then. Uh, that was also visible from, from Texas. 2032 and 2039, it's going to transit again, but not visible from Texas. Next time you see it from Texas, it's going to be in May of 2049. So if you missed the 2019 one, uh, you've got to wait a while until it happens on our side of Earth. Now, if you want to see it in 2032 or 2039, uh, you, you'd have to travel overseas to do that, uh, which, which is doable. Uh, uh, so, so that's that is a possibility. Venus transits are far less common. Venus transits are, have a pattern in that they they typically occur in, in, in pairs. So you have one and then you have one a little over a decade later and then you have one and you have one about a decade later and, and so forth and, and then but the spacing between them is over a century. So there was a very famous pair in 1874 and in 1882 um, in which astronomers made detailed measurements of Venus passing in front of the sun and, and from that confirmed several, several astronomical theories and measurements and so forth and triangulating from different parts of the Earth watching that observation uh, those years allowed us to very, very carefully measure the distance between Earth and Venus. And by that point, we'd figured out the relative spacing of all the planets. And so that allowed us to, to measure, uh, therefore, um, figure out exactly how far each planet was spaced from the sun. 2004, it happened again. 
And this was a huge deal because nobody alive in 2004 was alive in 1882, the last time it happened. So astronomers all over the world were eagerly awaiting this event. Uh, and so it was a fantastic sort of thing. By this point, we had the internet. It was being live streamed on the internet, which means you'll probably get live streamings of the, the transits of Mercury coming up here, even if they're not visible from, from Texas. Uh, but this was, this was streamed, and people were able to, able to, to see what was happening. Um, 2012, it happened in Texas. And I had told the, the, uh, uh, the, the college already that, you know, even though that was beginning a summer school, that I was not even going to be on campus if, this was, if it was cloudy. And sure enough, it was clear, and, and, uh, and we set up telescopes, and then a thunderstorm popped up and blotted out the sun where Venus was about to transit, and I was getting, like, real antsy, figuring out, you know, am I going to have to pack up telescopes and then drive somewhere? And then just as the transit was starting, the thunderstorm passed out of the way, and we were able to see most of the transit. Um, so so that, that, that event right there, 2012. If you missed it, you got to wait to 2117, and then it's going to happen again. And so 2117, there'll be a transit of uh, Venus passing in front of the sun, and then it'll happen again in 2125. And, and then it's going to be another hundred uh, over a century until the next pair comes along. So these transits are something that are unique to inferior planets. And so only an inferior planet can transit. Superior planets cannot transit. But inferior planets cannot ever be in opposition. So if something is in opposition, you know by default it's a superior planet or asteroid or comet or whatever. If it transits, you know by default it's going to be an inferior thing. Okay. Now we'll, we'll, we'll kind of like, you know, fine tune these ideas later, but this gives you an idea about uh, transits and how they relate to superior and inferior planets.